Hello Year 6, Mr Webb for reading skills today and today's lesson is focused a little bit on vocabulary but mostly on retrieval. So uh, you should have your reading skills book so if you can do the short date and the title super neatly that would be amazing. So today we've got a really fun retrieval lesson. Um, I'm going to read you a text and I'll explain what you need to do once we've gone through it. A mighty stomp of gigantic feet shattered the silence as the beast came pounding out of the fog and into the darkened forest. Fire eyes glared out at its surroundings. Higher than any human, the corpulent figure flattened the twisted towering trees with every awkward movement it made. Its scaly wrinkled snout sniffed the air and a strange rumble echoed so loud that it permeated the surroundings. Hugging the shadowy creature like a suit of armour were curved spiked wings, which on occasions flapped frantically, in the hope of scaring off even the bravest soul. Shoulders hunched, clawed feet dragging, it shuffled deeper into the murky shadows of the forest. It had no softness, no kindness, no mercy and no sense. Dark and green, its thick, coarse skin rippled against its muscles and across its scale-covered body lay a jagged scar. Spikes as sharp as spears were positioned along its back and tail, a tail so long and heavy it could easily crush a human. Blood-stained teeth lay in his gaping mouth, revealing canines that glistened like a row of swords in the moonlight. One thought and one thought alone filled the tiny mind of this dreadful monster. Find him. Find him. Got to defeat the knight. And this monster was the Jabberwocky. Okay, so some of you may have heard of the Jabberwocky before. Um, the Jabberwocky is obviously a character, but originally it's a, a nonsense poem written by Lewis Carroll, um, who wrote the Alice's Adventures in Wonderland books. Uh, next week we'll have a look at the poem, but this week I just wanted to concentrate on the description of the Jabberwocky. Before we get to the task, let's go through some of the vocabulary. Now, corpulent. Corpulent means fat. Higher than any human, the corpulent figure flattened the twisted, towering trees with every awkward movement it made. See if you can use the word corpulent in a positive way or a, um, a descriptive way in, this, in your writing this week or maybe perhaps even discussion. What about the word permeated? Now, can we use the text to work out the meaning of the word? Its scaly, wrinkled snout sniffed the air and a strange rumble echoed so loud that it permeated the surroundings. Pause the video, read the sentence again and just think, what might that word mean? OK, well done for having a go. Permeated means to spread throughout. So we know that the sound echoed and spread throughout the surroundings of the Jabberwocky. And finally, what about the word coarse? Now, coarse is actually a homophone. A homophone, remember, is two or more words with the same pronunciation, so how you say it, but different meanings. So we can spell coarse, C-O-U-R-S-E. But in that example, the noun of coarse is a root or a direction or the verb means to move. But what about the spelling C-O-A-R-S-E? Just like the word permeated, can you use the text to try and figure out what it means? Pause the video and have a go. So it had no softness. That's key there. No kindness, no mercy and no sense. Dark and green, its thick, coarse skin rippled against its muscles and across its scale-covered body lay a jagged scar. Coarse, spelled C-O-A-R-S-E, means a rough texture. So uh, it can be varying degrees of roughness, but I tend to think of something like sandpaper, perhaps. OK, so now we know some of those words. Uh, and hopefully you understand what the other words mean in the text. If not, use an online dictionary or try to figure it out by reading the text around it. Now, your task is to retrieve information from the text to draw and colour if you can, if you've got colouring pencils or pens, an accurate picture of the Jabberwocky. 
And remember, it's not about being the best artist. It's about reading the text carefully and drawing the most accurate picture. And then once you've done that, send your pictures uh, to the Teams chat um, and we'll see whose has been the closest into the description. Now, the great thing about these videos is you can pause, you can rewind. So what I do now is stop the video, go back to the description, read for it yourself once, and then have a go at drawing the picture. Any problems, give us a shout on Teams and have a brilliant rest of the day.